We're going to start playing with k-means, uh, so let's create a new script. I'm going to use a few libraries that I think they are handy for this problem. Gigali is, is a kind of ggplot-based library in, in order to do a kind of like pairs panels, but in a fancier way. I'm going to use also Facto Extra. It has a lot of I interesting visualization functions, all of them starting with fvs and then stuff. Okay. And the next library is going to be cluster. Again, it has some fancy functions for clustering processing and visualization. Okay, so let's load them. I'm going to use a very famous data set called USA Arrests. You can take a look at, at the help here. And you have some information about violent crimes in, in different US states. So if you take a look at the data, US sorry, US arrests. You see that you have four variables, which are quantitative variables, but they have different ranges. So let's follow the summary, US arrests. This, of course, this is all the thing that we have to do in every project, which is take a look at the data. Here you have a range between almost zero to 17, here to 45 to 337. And if you remember from the other video, I discussed this uh, nice paragraph in this book, and I was saying that one of the most Probably small decisions that we have to take with big consequences in clustering is to standardize the variables. So we've seen that our variables have different ranges, so we need to standardize them. We've seen a lot of methods to do that. Actually, we've played in a lot in this course with the carrot library, but it's this nice function called scale, which is in the base R library that do that for us. So US arrest, oh sorry. And I'm going to create a data frame because scale is going to pr provide a matrix. Okay, so let's take a look at our data. And now you see that the, the uh, sorry, let me get a summary. And now you can see that the data has mean zero and the standard deviation is going to be one. And that, that, that a reflection of that is that the, the interquantile in interval is around min minus 0.8 to 0.8. Okay, so now we have a good data set. Okay, so let's do some clustering. And in R is as simple as saying K means and now deciding on, on what data frame do we have to do. And now we have to decide uh, some parameters that you're looking here. So the centers is the value of K. The, the, num the number of iterations is related to this idea of repeating the initialization of the, pro of the problem. Remember that when we start with not very good points, that is going to have a huge impact in, in the outcome. And now we can have different algorithms. The standard one, the default one, which is the Hartigan one algorithm is, works pretty well. So now let's play, let's say, with four clusters, or five clusters for the sake of convenience. We're going to start repeating the initialization when 25, and I'm going to say trace equals true, so we can see what is going on there. Okay. Sorry, this is centers. And here we go. So you see that it has taken a little bit to do the operations and in different situations arrive to different indexes. These indexes are related to the, to the way in which we are clustering the data. Okay, now we have this object, km. We can have a summary of that. And now you see that you have a lot of variables inside. The most relevant variable is this cluster. Okay, you can see that the dimension of, of the variable is the dimension of the data frame. And that means that we are basically assigning a cluster to, to each of the points in the data set. So let's take a look at that variable, cluster. Okay, and you see now that every row in the data set would be assigned to a different cluster. So we started with five clusters, and that's why we have Alabama in cluster two, Alaska in cluster five, and so on and so forth. Another interesting variable inside this object is total width in SS which give us an idea of the error of, of clustering. So imagine that instead of doing that with five clusters, we start with, let's say, 25, okay? Now you see that the error is decreased, and this is the, the value that we are going to use for this elbow method. So the larger the number of clusters, the lower is going to be that one, but you know that it is a, a trade-off between having very small diameters and, and very large diameters. So we're going to play with that later. Okay, so let's play again with five. And we're going to use a function called silhouette, which is in the library cluster. And this silhouette is going to give us, uh, starting with uh, this number of clusters, let's put that into a variable, it's going to give us information about the silhouette method. We need a metric here, 
I'm going to use a distance, which is the distance between all the points in the data frame. So this is the variable and this is the function. And let me call that, sorry, let me call that. And now we have another object, which is this silhouette object with different parameters inside. Actually, this is a list and we can extract some information from there. For instance, if we take a look at the third variable, this is going to give us an idea of how good or bad is the, the silhouette coefficient for, for that value. For instance, a number eight is negative. Let's take a look at the data frame again. Okay, so in the case of Delaware, the silhouette number is negative. That means that probably is, is misclassified. Remember that the silhouette index was an idea of how good or bad. So the closer to one, the better the classification. Okay, let's plot that. And, and here is where this, this library Factor extra is going to be lovely. So silhouette and then the outcome of this function. And here we go. So here you have the silhouette. So you have some negative values in cluster number five. Overall, all the clusters are above the, the mean line. The line is not very large. So you can see that the mean value is around 0.3. This is not very good, but at least all the, all the groups are clustered together. And the thickness of these groups are more or less the same. So this is not the worst justification that we could have in mind. Let's repeat this analysis now with, let's say, k equals 2. Okay, now you can see that we are only have two labels inside this variable. So you are either in cluster 1 or cluster 2. Now, of course, this is larger than before because the, the, the lower the number of centers, the lower the k, the larger is going to be this diameter. And now let's try to play with this silhouette again. Okay, let's remove that. And here we go. And this is much better for a couple of reasons. First of all, the, the blue line, the, the, sorry, the dash red line is higher than before. That means that the mean silhouette coefficient is larger. We don't see any negative values there. And that means that probably we have, we haven't misclassified much that parameter. So we have two, two good points. So point f point 0.45 is better than point 0.3 as before. And the thickness is more or less the same. And the other parameter is that we don't have negative coefficients there. Okay, so we could spend all day trying different number of centers, but we're going to do things automatically. I'm going to create a an, e <coughs> an empty vector called elbow, and I'm going to store this total, total within SS from the, from the object km, and I'm going to create another variable, let's call this mean seal, and it's going to be the, the mean silhouette coefficient, again, a, an empty vector. And I'm going to loop for different values of k, so for k, let's say, uh, in 2 to not too large to 10 and now I'm going to store inside well, I'm going to calculate clustering of course okay means the data frame sorry centers is going to be K and now let's skip this, this initialization part in 25 so we can have we can remove somehow this bad luck of initialization in bad in bad positions and now Let's calculate the silhouette with the data frame cluster and the metric, this the distance of the F. Okay. Now at every point in the loop, we're going to take the old value of the vector elbow and we're going to uh, attach elbow and the value of km total within SS and the same for uh, mean silhouette. We're going to take the old value. And we, got, we are going to store seal, sorry, the mean value of the third column. Mean, uh, sorry, seal uh, three. Okay, here we go. So let's run this. That was quick because the data set is tiny. So we will have 50 states. So we will have 50 rows in the data frame. And now let's take a look at these coefficients, elbow. And you see this vector. And if you take mean seal, you see this vector, so let's do some plotting. Plot t 2 to 10, it is going to be k. And elbow on the other hand. Okay, this is going to be k. And that's enough. Okay, so we have we can see the elbow here. So we have this huge decrease in, in this metric, the to total within uh, standard error. Okay, and this decreases fast, and then this decreases lower. So the elbow would be here. So according to k-means, the optimal one would be k equals 4. Okay, let's take a look now at the, at the other metric. Mean seal. And here you see that the maximum is at 2. 
then we have a decrease and then an increase and and then we go back so we have according to the silhouette method k equals 2 would be the optimal solution okay